Java 7's new Files API has a tool that lets you easily create a watch service, a service that watches the contents of a directory and reports when any of the directory's contents are created, deleted, or modified. I'll show how to use this in this pretty much new project that has a main class with an empty main method and an empty files directory. So I'm going to be coding this entirely from scratch. I'll start in the main method. Within the main method, I'll create a try catch block. I'll use the new try with resources syntax. And within the parentheses of the try keyword, I'll create an instance of the new watch service class. I'll name this service and I'll instantiate it with the following code. File systems dot get default, that's a reference to the current file system, dot new watch service. So now, because I'm creating the service object inside the try parentheses, when the try catch is completed, it will be released completely. And you won't have to explicitly call close methods or reset it to null. Now within the try catch block, I'll create a new instance of the hash map class, but I'm going to create it as an instance of the map interface. I'll set the map's key data type to watch key, another new class and I'll set its content data type to path to represent individual path objects. I'll set the name of this map to key map and then I'll instantiate it using the constructor for the hash map class. So the concrete data type of this collection is hash map but I'm setting its higher level data type to map so that I can easily pass it to other parts of the application. The next step is to get a path object pointing to my files directory. That's where I'm going to create, delete, and alter files. So I'll create a new path object. I'll name it path. And I'll get its reference from paths.get. And I'll pass in the directory name files. The next step is to populate the key map. I'll call the key maps put method. And I'll pass in the following values. The key value will be an object that's returned from the path object's register method. It looks like this. Path.register. And notice that when you register, you can pass in the watch service object as the first argument, and then either a list of events or an array of events that you're going to listen for. So the first argument will be the service object I already created. Now I'm going to use the syntax for the register method that lets me pass in a list of the kinds of events I want to listen for. Event kinds are identified by properties of standard watch event kinds an enumerator class. So I'll pass in standard watch event kinds and my first kind of event that I want to listen for entry underscore create. I'll add a comma to the end of that line and then I'll duplicate that a couple of times. For my second kind of event that I'll listen for I'll use entry delete and for my third kind I'll use entry modify. I'll close up the call to the register method with a closing parentheses. I'll get rid of these extra parentheses. And then finally, for my second argument that I'm passing into put, I'll pass in the path object. It looks like I have an extra comma there, and I'll fix that, and the error goes away. So now I've created a map that I can use to configure my watch service. The next step is to create an instance of a class called watch key. Remember that this was the data type of my key property in the map. And for the moment, I'm just going to declare the variable, but not yet instantiate it. And now it's time for my infinite loop. I'll do this using a do loop. You could just as easily use a while or other type of loop. I'll type do, press control space, and choose the do while statement. I'm going to keep on looping infinitely, but every time I loop, I'm going to call a method of the watch key object called reset. And that will clear the content of the watch key so that each time through the loop, I'll be notified of an event. And then as I go through the loop again, I'll start off with a fresh slate. Inside the do loop, I'll get a reference to the watch key using the watch service objects take method. And then I'll create a path object that I'll call event dir for event directory and I'll get its reference from keymap.get watch key. Key. 
Now I'm ready for an inner loop. For the inner loop, I'll be looping as long as I get something back from a method called poll events. So I'll use this code template for each, and I'll set the following properties. The data type of the object I get back from poll events is something called a watch event. It asks me to assign a data type, but I don't know what kind of event I'm getting. So I'll set the data type to a question mark. And I'll name the object that I'm getting back event. I'm getting that object by calling a method of the watch key called poll events. So within the for loop, each time a file is created, deleted, or altered, I'll get an event. I want to examine the kind of event and also get the name and location of the file, which will be provided by a method of the event object called context. First, the event kind. I'll declare a variable data typed as watchevent.kind. As with the watch event itself, I don't know what kind of event I'm getting, so I'll use a question mark. And I'll set the name of the object to kind. And I'll get its reference by calling event.kind, the method. On the next line, I'll get the path. I'll create a path object and name it event path. And I'll get its reference by calling event.context. But the context method may or may not return a path object. I know it will in this code, so I'll explicitly data type the return value. And then finally, I'm ready to output the results. I'll use system out, and I'll output the event dir. I'll concatenate a colon and a space. Then I'll concatenate the kind of event, another colon and space, and then finally the event path. My catch block has a broad exception handler for any kind of exception. The particular types of exceptions you might encounter in this code would be an I.O. exception or an interrupted exception. I'll keep my event catching code generic for now. And I'm ready to run the code. I'll restore the size of the editor so I can see my package explorer over here. And I'll run the application. Notice that my cursor is spinning, and that tells me that the application is running. Now, I'm going to go to my Files folder and I'm going to create a new file. And I'll name it a file.txt. And I immediately get the feedback in the console that within the files directory, I got an entry create event, and the name of the file was a file.txt. I'll do the same thing again. I'll create another new file. I'll name it file2.txt. And there's my second event. Now, I'm going to delete one of these files. I'll select the file from the Package Explorer, press Delete, and click OK. And this time I get an Entry Delete event. Now I'll copy and paste a file. I'll click on the file and press Control c and then Control v and I'll give my new file its own name. This time I got an Entry Create and then a couple of modifies. And I got those modifies because I misspelled the file initially and then corrected it. And for the final demonstration, I'll rename an existing file. First, I'm going to clear my console. Then I'll come over here and click on another file.txt. And I'll rename it to renamed.txt. And notice that I get three events. A delete for another file, a create, and a modify. When I'm done testing my application, I'll terminate it by clicking the Terminate button in the console view. So this was a demonstration of how to use the Watch Service class and its associated Watch Key and Watch Event classes to watch the contents of a directory on disk, listen for events, and then take particular actions when those events occur. You can listen for the Create, the Delete, and the Modify events and handle a single directory in this way. And if you combine this code with, say, a directory walker, you can watch an entire directory tree for any files that are placed, deleted, or otherwise modified in that area of your hard disk.